All right, Natalie is here and Natalie uh, tell me um, I, I know you are a huge LeBron James fan uh, and, and, and tell me if I'm being too cynical when I say <laughs> that I think LeBron James was disappointed after scoring 31 points in the first half yesterday. He had a 40 point game nearly had a, always mess almost messed around and had a triple double uh, in their closing closing game against Denver, well, that one they got closed out. But then the he looked at it and like, yeah, and like you know, we're not going to the finals. It's over. It's over. I'm upset. I'm exhausted. I played hurt. I thought we might be able to make uh, extend this run, and so now I think he's just emotional. I I I would be shocked. I really would be stunned if LeBron James put that out there as the seed for retirement. And then we find out a month later, LeBron James is called a career. I don't think it's going to go down like that. I, uh, one, because of it just, it was hours, not even hours, minutes after the game Two, He's too much of a storyteller that I think his retirement is going to be a whole production. <laughs> I, I really do. What do you think, yeah, Natalie? I, I agree with you. Um, uh, look, I... First of all, I don't think LeBron James says anything without thinking it through, right? Even in him responding and reacting and being emotional, maybe that's not right the wor right word, but just reacting in the moment. And um, I do think there is some genuine genuineness there in terms of just him probably being tired and exhausted and father time catching up with you and just, you know, realizing that. So I do think that's real. Um and I think he has options because he's LeBron James, right? I mean, we've ne we see him do things all the time he's never done. What if he takes a break for a year and then comes back rejuvenated? He can do that. He's LeBron James. Um, I agree that he will not retire without it being a production. Nike, the network, everyone has too much to make from that, um, including himself. So I don't think it would just be some short like, hey, now later it comes out that he's retiring. So, you know... He's also walked back his stance a little bit about his son, it seems, you know, before he's been expressing that he wants to play with him. Apparently, you know, Dave McMenamin from ESPN is reporting that now he's saying, you know, he's OK or he's fine with it, um, with not necessarily playing with him. So we'll see. You know, again, a lot of this seems reactionary, but um, no, I don't think this will be the end of LeBron James in the NBA. And Natalie, you talked about the emotions of the moment. And one thing I learned is to not take anything too seriously that said in the wake of a loss, a season ending loss, right? Uh, covering college basketball in the 90s, back when there was more doubt about whether players were going to leave to go to the pros or come back. You know, now we know going in the top players, they're one and done. But there used to be some doubt about guys like Jerry Stackhouse, say, when he was in North Carolina. And they'd lose an NCAA tournament and they'd say, oh, I don't know, you know, I think I might want to stay. I really like it here and my teammates and Coach Smith and all that stuff. And then a couple of days later, once once I think they had a chance to run the numbers and and had some sense <laughs> talked into them, they're like, yeah, we're, we're going to go to the pros. Mm -hmm. So people make emotional statements, but yes. LeBron knows better than to make this decision in the moment. So he'll take all the time he needs, probably go on a yacht somewhere in the Mediterranean this summer and contemplate, um, I, I guess we haven't really thought about the pros versus the cons, right? The, you know, what, what more does he have to play for? If there's a new king or ruler out West, you know, if he doesn't see himself on a team that can get past these nuggets for the near future. And if he's saying he's only playing for championships wow. and his best is not enough to beat a Jokic. I mean, <laughs> that was a pretty great LeBron game last night and it still wasn't enough to beat Jokic and the yeah. Nuggets at home. So what's he got to play well, for? Well, that's because you need Anthony Davis to be the best player on the team, and he was not. So, you know, uh, I thought it was a really great insight, though, when he said that, because it lets you know, and he's also letting the Lakers know, that this team, as constructed, isn't enough, whether it's to compete versus the Nuggets or potentially other teams, because we don't know what the offseason is going to bring to us. Yeah, and, you know, the other thing is, this is why I know he's not retiring because at the end of that interview, I don't know if it, if, if McManaman ran it in the sequence that the conversation flowed, but at the end of the story, he said, I'm still better than 90 to 95, 90% of the NBA, maybe 95. <laughs> okay, dude, when you think like that, 
Okay, if you're thinking <laughs> like that, you ain't ready. You ain't ready to just like I'm at peace. Guys who are ready to say I'm at peace. I've proven everything. You're like, oh, I can still go. He's still competitive. I mean, I don't think he's ready to set it uh, to 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 put it aside yet. But Natalie, you brought up something, and I want to get your, your, uh, both of your takes on this one because I thought this was an important point. You brought up the whole Bronny thing, how he's kind of backed away. Was he wanted to play with Bronny, and now he's going with the hey, his journey is his journey, and I had my journey. We're here to support him. I think that is such a wise decision because Bronny, you put, and I, and I know hey, Bronny can handle it. He's a charismatic kid. He's doing great. He's got more. Bronny's got more Instagram followers than than uh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Okay, like he's doing well. Okay, he's he's great. He got people. He's got his own brand. He's got commercials. But I feel like if you make it, if LeBron makes it about playing with Bronny, he unintentionally makes it about him and not about his son. At some point, you have to step aside and let your son do what he's going to do. And you don't know if he's going to make it to the pros. There are a lot of 6-3 great wing defend defenders, 3 and D guys who don't make it in the NBA. So I think LeBron is very wise. This is a, I think this is the father in him saying, wait a minute. I may have taken this thing too far. Maybe somebody is, is going to misinterpret. This is all love here, but it could be twisted and it might put undue pressure on my son. I, I want to know what you guys think of uh, think of that. I yeah, I mean, I, no, I think that's definitely, you know, a possibility and I'm sure. I mean, I think in general, he's probably trying to figure out how to navigate this situation because it's so unique, right? And he already knows that because of who he is, his son, both of his sons, you know, eventually, but like, there's just going to be always comparisons to him. Um, it will always be like, you know, Bronny comparison to his father, even though they're different builds, they don't play like similarly. So I think figuring out the best way to handle it, like they're doing this in real time. So that has to be a part of his thought process. And you also don't want your son's first season, should you even make it that long, to be all about you and not him. But also he's talking about, you know, recognizing that this is Bronny's journey now and his choices. Right. And regardless of whether or not Bronny stays in college, he's college age now for these next few years. And what's the best part about when you're college age of that age? You don't have to be around your parents. Right. So who would yes. want to have to sign up for flights, bus rides, meetings, practices, games, locker rooms with your dad? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, the team lands in New York. Hey, Bronny. What you about to, oh, we about to hit the club. Oh, really? I was thinking we could have dinner. You know? Okay, Dad. Or Dad start or Dad start wagging a finger like, hey man, are you serious about this journey? Are you serious about this? You really you think it's you think it's right. you think I'm the best thing for you to be going to the club? Out. Like, right. hey man, you were 19 once, you were 20 once, you weren't always in strive for greatness. That wasn't always on your t-shirts and your hats. You hung out too. But yeah, that's a good <laughs> point. I do want to say, you know, NBA Twitter theories here, but also like LeBron James is probably a very smart man because by doing this and, and talking about potential retirement, he does take away from the fact that the Lakers got swept and that, you know, the news will be less focused on the Lakers sweep, his sweep, not saying that, you know, he's been swept before. He's LeBron James. He's great. He's going down in history as one of the greatest to some the greatest. But now the attention is less focused on Denver and the sweep and more about is LeBron going to retire. So, I mean, he's a you know, <laughs> genius. It, it and, and in some ways, things have come full circle because Le when LeBron <laughs> first broke through and got to the NBA Finals in 2007, and you had a slightly older Kobe Bryant, he was younger back then, but he was a lot older and further along in his career than LeBron James. What happened? That's when he started, I want to get traded, trade me. He was going on this trade me campaign, stealing all the attention away from LeBron James and the NBA Finals, right? He couldn't stand to not be the center of attention. And now here's an aging LeBron James worried Ooh. about falling out of the limelight. And here he is taking away all the attention from the Denver Nuggets and this team that's going to his first finals trip.
Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.